Das ist einfach nicht im Tag. Du siehst unten den Mondkrater. Mhm. Vorhin habe ich jetzt zum Das war gut. Krass. This 200-dollar telemirror lens has an incredible focal length of 800 mm. I'll tell you in a moment what it is exactly and what it's not good at. But first I'll show you what you can do with it. I know, we all have seen way better pictures of the moon, but it's something completely different to see the moon by your own eye. Nothing between your camera and the moon than air. To see the moon moving, to see the turbulences make him look kind of alive. As I mentioned in my video about gold macro photography, illumination is key. When you shoot the moon in the face when it's illuminated from the side, you can see the crater structure much better than at full moon. Since I was a child, I am fascinated by deserted areas and by mankind's ability to discover and explore it. When I look through this small piece of technology, I feel a bit like an explorer myself. want to go straight to the details about the lens jump forward or you could just relax for a few minutes and watch the eagle landing. Apollo 11 mission planned to land the eagle in the Mare Tranquilitatis. So the landing place was called Tranquility Base and Armstrong confirmed after landing with the words Houston, Tranquility Base here, the eagle has landed. Hear these famous words for yourself. This video is sponsored by Window Light, the cheapest solution for soft lighting all over the planet. It's for free, it's available everywhere. And you know the best? It's even true! The lens I use is a Maksutov telescope, invented by the Russian optician Dmitry Maksutov. It 
It is a so-called catadioptric system. Catadioptric means it's a combination of lenses and mirrors. In this design the primary doesn't have to be a spherical, because the big lens at the entrance corrects the spherical aberration of the primary mirror. lens also carries the secondary mirror. It is closer to a telescope, but it's often used as telelens for DLSRs. In German we call it Russentonne, Russian barrel. It has two big advantages compared to classical telelenses with this very long focal length. First, it is way smaller. Second, it is way, way cheaper. A similar classical telelens costs thousands of dollars, even tens of thousands. But obviously it also has some big disadvantages. Due to its design, the central portion of its pupil is blocked. This gives a strange drop in mid-frequency MTF. With other words, the contrast is lousy. It's soft and hazy. The pupil obscuration also gives a strange bokeh. The burr is not a disc, it's rather kind of a toe nut, which doesn't look very nice for me. Additionally, the F number has to be very high, so there is some diffraction as well, which also makes the image softer. And another practical point, it's pretty difficult to focus, I really had some problems. I don't want to use it for wildlife photography or something like that, where you have to be fast and accurate with focusing. So as a conclusion, if you want a crystal clear tele picture of a grizzly bear eating a polar bear eating an alligator with some beautiful scenery in the background with nice bouquet, then, well, I suggest you rather buy a classical tele lens. But if you are an explorer heart like me, who just wants to play with some optics, or surf for example the moon, the Pleiades, or, for, or a faraway mountain peak or something like that, and you don't want to spend too much money, then the Maxutov may be something for you. Das ist einfach krass, das ist so. Der wandert jetzt durch das Bild durch. Da. Jetzt ist er dann schon rechts unten aus dem Bild. Der Mond. Der Mond natürlich schnell. Der hohe Mond, der Saukrüppel. Der. Oh, der Ton nimmt sich auch auf. Das ist ein geiles Video. Der Huhn, der Krüppel, geht aus dem Pilz. 